And it came to pass is one of my favorite sayings from the Bible. I was raised pretty much in the King James Version, and I did some research on this phrase because it's just something I felt like I should share with you today. In the King James Version, it's listed 1,697 times. In the NIV, it's three times. And in the ESV Version, it's 43 times. It just, it's such a hopeful phrase, biblically, because we're all at different stages in our lives, and sometimes it just feels like we're waiting forever for those things that we have prayed for and we've asked God for to come to pass, and it just feels like, when? You know, when, God, is this going to fall in place? Well, I've got some encouraging scriptures for you today that I think you're going to love and you're going to appreciate hearing. And there's probably some things in here that are common sense and you know them and you've heard them before. But let me just encourage you and remind you today of God's faithfulness. So what do I do? I have this promise from God. I know there's things that I'm supposed to be doing. What do I do? Well, I would say the first thing you need to do is go back to basics and just don't stop praying about it. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, you didn't pray in faith the first time, but there are things in the kingdom that you cannot control. And one of those things is timing. Timing in the kingdom is everything. Uh, it isn't just about you being ready. It's about others being ready. It's it's about the place that you're going to uh, ready for you. Uh, a lot of things have to kind of come together all at the same time and you don't get to make that happen in your time. Trust me, you know, I've tried. <laughs> if we try to make things happen in our time, we're just going to mess it up and I've been there, you know, but when it's God's timing, when he is going to open the door, when he is going to bring you across that path, when he is going to take you to the new place, you can't stop that from happening. Why? Because he's in it. You're ready. The place is ready. It's time. Just keep praying. In the book of Luke, I was reminded of that scripture in Luke 11, um, where you were taught to, to pray the Lord's Prayer. But in the end of it says... Um, Everyone who keeps asking receives. He who keeps seeking finds. And he who keeps knocking, the door will be opened unto you. Just keep going after God. He doesn't leave you or forsake you. But there are times where things don't happen and you just don't get it. You've just got to trust him. The next thing I like to do um, when I get discouraged is I just go back and study people in the Bible that had to wait. And that for me makes me feel better because I feel like I'm not the only one, you know, I'm not the only one that just feels like I've been sitting there forever. When God, when, um, let me remind you of a couple things. You know, that when Abraham and Sarah were waiting for their promise, they were quite old until their promise, their son came, came and it, you know, it didn't even look like it could be possible. It didn't even look like it was going to happen. But God, in his timing, brought it to pass. Another one I love to think about is Joseph. You know, Joseph, man, he was lied about. He was thrown into prison for a long time. He had this beautiful promise of this coat from, you know, this. he had this beautiful thing that had come from his father. But he went through some really hard times in jail and in Egypt, and he was falsely accused of things. Um, and he had to wait until the promise that God was given to him came to pass. You know, sometimes the Lord will tell you to be quiet. Joseph was told to be quiet. He was told not to share with his brothers the thing that had been promised to him. Well, that promise just made them jealous. Sometimes if God gives you a word, you've just got to shut your mouth. And hide it in your heart. And be careful about who you share it with. Because it could be so big that others just don't comprehend what God's going to do. The other one I love is King David. King David, uh, he had a prophet come and pull him out of a line of brothers. 
And the prophet anointed his head with oil and said, you are going to be king. Just imagine hearing that. Can you imagine having a prophet prophesy that over you? Well, then what happened? Well, it was 25 years later after he went through wars and Goliath and running in the desert from Saul who wanted to kill him. He's hiding in caves. He doesn't understand why Saul doesn't love him or why, you know, what, what is happening, God? God, where are you? And he had a promise. And the promise was, one day, you will be king. And he knew it the whole time. Sometimes you have a prophetic promise and you know it's going to come to pass. You just don't know how. You just don't know when. Well, guess what? You may go through a series of years, just like other people in the Bible did, until those promises come to pass. That doesn't mean that God has turned his back on you or that he doesn't know where you are or what you're going through or that you have people that are trying to hurt you. He knows all of that. You just have to go back to the promise that you have and stand on it and wait. Trust him. Know him. Know that it will happen. Another thing um, I love to do is go back and look at the scriptures about waiting on God. You know, there's a lot of them, and a lot of them are in Psalms. And I think it's probably one of the reasons why we all gravitate back to Psalms and we go back to reading the Psalms, because in these books, he's just transparent about how he feels. David is writing, or the other other writers that write in the book of Psalms, but mostly it's David, and he's writing things out. And these these writings actually end up becoming songs. And there's something about singing and worship and connecting our heart through transparency with God that we feel his presence. Because why? We can just be honest. I mean, you know, I, I believe in speaking the word, yes. But I think there's a level of speaking the word when you know when you're going through something really tough you've got to understand that God knows he already knows talk to him take it to him yes you're going to stand by faith yes you're going to speak the word but there there's a thing in there where you, you can be honest and open with him you can be transparent with him you can share your heart with him and there's several of them psalms 13 Psalms 27, 13 through 14. Psalms 62, verses 1 through 8, and Lamentations. And as you go through those, I mean, you're going to see some really honest things like, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? <laughs> have you ever felt like that? I have. Um, I also love those scriptures, though, where you can go back and remind yourself of things. And... Um, and, uh, and how long, uh, no, 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 I want to go to 27. I am still confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. living. Even though it doesn't look like it's going to come to pass, remind yourself that he is faithful. Remind yourself he is good. Remind yourself that he will do it. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. And you've really, I think at times you've just got to remind yourself of that. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken out of the book of Lamentations. You know, there are going to be things and times you are going to be shaken. I I, I was listening to a, a, a movie last night. It was a documentary, actually, about General uh, Boykin, who I respect and Here's this general, and he's gotten hit, and he's being hauled up to a plane. And at that very moment, he's asking, kind of like, God, well, where are you? I mean, did you turn your back on me? I mean, I've led this this military force into Grenada. And, and he looks up, and the guy who's flying the helicopter to fly him out is waving at him. And that guy turns out to be one of his good friends from when he was much, much younger. And he said, the funny thing happened was, at that moment, because that man was sent to pick me up, I knew God had not forgotten me. Yeah, I'd been shot. Yeah, I was in war. Yeah, you know, I'm in pain. Yeah, they're hauling me into a, into a helicopter to take me to a military hospital. But God has not for, forsaken me. 
Look for the good things that God is doing in the middle of the hard things, the painful things. Remind yourself of his faithfulness. Remind yourself that he, he, do, he never leaves you nor forsake you. Another thing you can do is um, rehearse those other times where he's been faithful. Can you make a mental list of all the awesome things that God's ever done for you? Have you ever sat down and journaled your miracles? I have. Have you ever gone back and reminded yourself of every single breakthrough he's given you? I have. And sometimes that will really help you remember how good he's really been. It's kind of interesting because if you go back, and I think it was in the book of Genesis, but you go back in there and 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 God is getting frustrated and angry with the Israelites because guess what? He's brought them out of Egypt and he's delivered them and there were flies and there were lice and there were frogs and, and there were all these things that happened and here they were in the wilderness and they were grumbling and they were complaining about the deliverance that God had brought them and it, it made God mad. I mean, don't take my word for it. You're going to want to go back and look at that. But it's really interesting because... When you go back and you look at that and you remember, you know, God has done good things for you. But when you rehearse the victories, when you rehearse the provision, when you rehearse the, the incredible moments where he did something for you that was so supernatural and you don't remember those things, he's like, well, I keep doing things for you, but, you know, you're not celebrating the victories. You're just looking at all of the opposition you don't want to do that. You know, you really don't want to do that. You want to remind yourself of what he's done for you that's been good. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk to you about is about using the time for purpose. One of the things I've really learned is that if something gets delayed, it's okay. It's okay. Sometimes delay is God's way of getting you ready for what he's going to give you. And he knows that you don't have the maturity or the strength or the wisdom to not blow it. Think about it. If the thing that you were believing for happened to you today, would you be able to handle it? Really? If you got the business breakthrough, would you have the staff to handle the breakthrough? Would you have the support line or chain? Would you have the accountants in place? Would you have the attorneys in place to protect you? Careful what you pray for. You know, God can give you a miracle, but then when he, you get it, then you've got to take care of it. You've got to manage it. You've got to... Uh, feed it. <laughs> you have to grow it. You have to maintain it. You don't want that thing to happen to you until you're ready. And then when you're ready, it's going to happen. And you know, sometimes it isn't just about God preparing you. God's also preparing others. Because one thing you learn if you're doing kingdom business, it's not just about you. If it's kingdom business, it's going to involve others. It's going to involve people you're going to work with. It's going to involve partners. It could be a spouse, okay? It could be babies and children. It could be business partners. It could be ministry contacts. It could be all kinds of things. God's going to give you the baby when you're ready for the baby. God's going to give you the husband when you're ready for the husband. God's going to give you a promotion even though it feels like it's over your head and you don't know how in the world you're going to do it, you're going to get that promotion when you're ready for the promotion. Is it the business breakthrough? Well, maybe you better get ready for the business breakthrough. See, God's timing is always redemptive. And what I mean by that is, if you will be faithful and guard your heart and guard your attitude and guard your prayer life and guard your confession and keep praying and keep standing in the middle of all of that, you're going to be prepared and you're going to be able to handle the next season with wisdom, with self-control, mm, with patience, 
Maybe you need to learn to be quiet and wait. Maybe you need to learn to control your mouth. <laughs> okay? If you don't have the self-control to be in that position, maybe you're not ready yet. Boy, that's wisdom. Mm, 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 that'll help somebody today. Trust him. Trust your journey. My invitation for you today is to trust him when you don't know when. When is it going to happen? Trust him. My invitation to you is just to keep standing. Keep praying. Keep worshiping. Don't back off on God's best. Just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Okay? Don't get discouraged. In due season, it will come to pass. Don't you love it in the word uh, when it says, and it came to pass? You know, when Jesus was born, it was 400 years of darkness during the season of the Maccabees before the Old Testament and the New. And the, the presence of evil in the earth was so heavy. But the promise of the Messiah was coming and it came. And it came to pass in the form of Jesus, born of a virgin. He, he came to be our redeemer. He came to be our justifier. He came to um, enable us so that we could be forgiven of our sins because of what he did for us when we receive him. All we have to do is humble ourselves, repent, and ask Jesus to come into our lives and into our heart, knowing that he will forgive us. And it came to pass. And guess what? It's going to come to pass in your life too. Trust God. He is good, and he is faithful, and he will make it come to pass.